Hi everyone, uh, back with chapter two of There's a Dragon in My Backpack. Chapter two. Hey Toby, I said as I got out of the car later that day. He was climbing out of his parents' massive car next door and did not look happy. I mean, he never does, that's just Toby. But today he looks especially unhappy. He was still wearing his PE kit, which might have explained his mood. Toby hated exercise. He completely ignored me, dragging his bag by the straps into his house and slamming the door behind him. Here's a picture of Toby's backpack, by the way. Look familiar? I had mine for a whole day before Toby made his mum buy him the same one. He hates if, it ever, if I ever have something he doesn't. Even worse, afterwards he insists that I copied him. Well, that was nice, I said staring at Toby's closed front door. Oh, we mustn't have heard you, said Mum, as she strapped my little sister Posy from her car seat. Never mind, he'll be round for tea tonight. You can catch up with him then. Woohoo, I said sarcastically. Of course you can't come back to school, I told Pan once we were in my room, stunned that he would even bother to ask. Oh, he moaned as he climbed out my bag. It's so boring being stuck in the house all day. If you think that's boring, then you've obviously never had to write a report for Miss Biggs before, I said. Pan looked confused. Of course I haven't. I'm a mini dragon. Yes, I know. I meant, oh, never mind, I said. Look, we tried it today and it was a disaster. But next time, I promise. No, Pan, I said, putting my foot down. Look, I'd better go. Toby's coming round for his tea. Pan folded his tiny arms, the clear, the clear beginnings of a mini dragon sulk. Don't be like that, I said. I undid the front pocket of my backpack and took out a brown paper bag. Look, Ming gave me some prawn crackers. Mini dragons love prawn crackers almost as much as they love dirty laundry. In fact, according to the Encyclopedia, you know, Encyclopedia Draconica, a massive book containing everything you could ever want to know about dragons, Mini dragons actually only have three main food groups. Dirty washing, mountain goats, prawn crackers. I tried to make sure Pan always had plenty of prawn crackers around so that I don't have to explain to Mum why my school clothes looked like they lost a fight with the cactus. Without even a glance in my direction, Pan snatched the bag, then retreated to a corner of the bed. With his back to me, he began munching away. I left him to it. When I walked into the kitchen, Dad was sitting at the table as Mum served out dinner. Beef lasagna. The only good thing about Toby coming around for tea was that Mum always made her best dishes. Where's Toby? I asked, looking round. Nothing made me more nervous than seeing food with Toby's name on it and not seeing Toby. It was a sure sign of trouble. It's not like him to be late, said Mum. Ding dong! That'll be him now, I expect, said Dad. Eric, go and let him in, said Mum. I opened the door. Sure enough, it was Toby, but not the Toby I knew. A good evening, Eric, he said, which set off alarm bells. There were a total of three things wrong with that sentence. Number one, Toby never greeted anyone. The closest he normally came was with a half-hearted grunt. Two, he had used my actual name, not Crispo, you, Idiot, burr brain loser, dolt, uggo, moron, plonker, numbskull, dunderhead, or brain dead, stupid faced Wally. Three, it was said with a smile. I've seen Toby smirk tons of times, and he, was a he has a pretty impressive, nasty grin that he likes to roll out on special occasions, but I've never seen him do a proper smile before. It was creepy. What are you up to? I said, narrowing my eyes. What do you mean? he asked innocently. If I didn't know better, I'd almost think you were trying to be nice. What are you on about, Eric? said Toby, letting me enter the room first. I'm always nice. Hello, Mrs Crisp, Mr Crisp. Uh, hello, Toby, said my parents, looking as confused as me. Ooh, lasagna, said Toby, clapping his hands. How wonderful. Mum and Dad turned towards me as if I was expecting some kind of explanation for nice Toby. But all I could offer was a shrug. I had no idea who this boy was or what he had done with the real Toby. You're all looking well, said Toby. 
It continued like this for the rest of the meal. Your food is amazing, Mrs. Crisp, as always. How was school, Eric? You must give this delightful recipe to my mum. She won't use it herself, of course, but she'll pass it along to our cook. How are the kippers getting on this season? Mr. Crisp, I must come along soon and then my support. Huh? I said. I'd heard the, the words, but coming from Toby, my brain was having a difficult time making any sense of them. Toby didn't ask questions like this. Toby asked questions like, can you guess what my parents just bought me? Is there any more? Is that all I'm getting? Are you going to finish that? Why are you such an idiot, Crispo? Toby's asking, how, uh, Toby's asking you how school was, dear, said Mum slowly, as if she couldn't quite believe what she was saying. Dad was just staring at Toby in amazement, his mouth wide open. Um, fine, I said. Of course it hadn't been fine, but I could barely remember school at that point. I was so confused. It's show and tell tomorrow, isn't it, Eric? said Mum. Oh, we've got that too, said Toby. Toby and I don't go to the same school. I go to Tim Dimbleford Primary and Toby goes to the Lexington Academy for the development and improvement of the deeply advantaged. Toby calls it Lexington. To everyone else, it's the la -de da I don't know that much about the la -de da really, except that it's expensive to go there and they have just about everything you could ever think of, like their own football stadium and a safari park and a private airfield. At least that's what Toby says. I'm not sure he's always truthful about his school. Jaden is convinced that all the kids who go there are exactly like Toby, which doesn't bear thinking about. So what are you showing? Continued Toby. Not the mini dragon. No, uh, I said, cutting him off. Mum and Dad do not know about Pan, but what they know is different to what Toby knows. In fact, it was getting so hard to keep track of who believed what that I ended up creating this handy cutout and keep chart. Person, mum and dad, what they think Pan is, a toy Jaden gave me for my ninth birthday. Person, Toby, what they think Pan is, a super advanced toy with state-of-the-art artificial intelligence and awesome fire-breathing abilities. Person, Puskin, what they think Pan is, prey, posy, a teething toy. Person, Min and Jaden, what they think Pan is, an actual mini dragon. The first time Toby ever saw Pan, I told him he was a new toy. Pan had frozen at the time, a defence mechanism that mini dragons have when they sense danger. So it wasn't that hard to convince him. Since then, Toby has witnessed Pan talking, moving and even lightening his own fire with his dragon breath. Yet somehow, it still hasn't occurred to him that Pan isn't battery operated. Yeah, he's not that bright. I'm doing my show and tell with Min and Jaden. We're showing the walkie talkies we've been using recently. Walkie talkies, said Toby, looking unimpressed. Why don't you just use your smartphones? Mine lets you video chat with a hundred people at the same time, and you can play nin Penguin Ninja on it. Eric doesn't have a smartphone, said Mum. Toby looked at her as if she had just spoken a foreign language. The range on the walkie talkies is amazing, I said, up to three miles. Toby shook his head in bewilderment. My phone has a range of the entire planet. Wow, I thought, finally something I have that Toby doesn't want. Although, in this case, only because he has something better. So, what are you taking to your show and tell, Toby? Asked Dad. Toby shifted uncomfortably in his chair. Well, that's still up in the air at the moment. Actually, Eric, about that. Could I have a word? In private? I can't chat for long. I've got a report due tomorrow, I said as we entered the sitting room. Can we give video games a miss? Toby looked around distractedly. What? Oh, right, yeah, fine, whatever. Listen, since you're not using that dragon, can I borrow it for a bit, please? Please, only for a day, I promise. Somehow, I managed to avoid laughing in Toby's face. He had already stolen Pan once before. The chances of me voluntarily handing Pan over to him were about the same as Toby being awarded a Nobel Prize for honesty. But still, I was curious. What do you need him for? I asked. You've no idea what show and tell is like at Lexington. These are the most privileged kids in the country. Showing off their things is like an Olympic sport to them. If you don't have something amazing that no one else has, then the other kids humiliate you. I'm sure it's not that bad, I said. Toby flopped onto the couch, holding his head in his hands. 
It is, he said. They made a kid cry last month because he brought in a sol solid gold watch. Wow, I said, impressed. What was wrong with that? It was from last season's range. I shook my head in amazement. Well, I'm sure you have plenty of cool things you could show them. I have plenty of cool things I could show you, said to Toby, rolling his eyes, but not them. Please, Crispo, I mean, Eric, I need your help. I've searched the internet trying to find a dragon myself, but it's like they don't exist. Did you get yours delivered? I nodded, hiding a smile and decided against telling Toby that Pan had arrived in the Chinese takeaway. Toby put his hands together, together, his face pleading like a puppy. Please, Eric, I'm desperate, he said. I can see that, I said, realising how hard it must be for Toby to beg like this. But I'm sorry, the answer's no. Toby's face almost exploded with rage. I knew you'd be no help. I can't believe I was actually nice to you and your parents. Your mum's cooking is rubbish, by the way. Toby stormed out of the house, leaving me alone in the sitting room with my mouth open, catching flies. What was all that about? asked Pan, popping out from behind the sofa. I have no idea, I said, smiling down at him. How long have you been there? Long enough to know that boy is still crazy, said Pan. I nodded. Oh well, at least I'll have some piece to work on that report that I'm never going to finish for tomorrow. 500 words in one night? It's impossible. Pan folded his arms and leaned confident, confidently against the sofa. Funny you should say that, he said, because you'll never guess what mini dragons happen to be excellent at. And that's the end of chapter two. Tune in for chapter three tomorrow.